Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 142 of the show with no name. I'm your humble host, Nick, and today we're going to continue exploring this giant old cemetery out here in Spokane, Washington. This cemetery goes by the name of the Greenwood Memorial Terrace. And this is part eight of my documentation of this cemetery. I like to call this episode the first Presbyterian Church episode. Let's get into this. This is the first Presbyterian church insignia right here that lets you know that you're entering their part of the cemetery here at Greenwood Memorial Terrace. And I'm actually standing up there in the church part of the cemetery right now, looking down at the lower level from above, the lower level which I'm also covering in this episode as well. I'm down here on the lower level now, and this was probably my favorite area in the entire cemetery because it has my favorite statue, the one that caught my eye the most out of every statue or headstone in this cemetery. And it's this statue right here, the Schelling family statue. There are multiple shellings buried here, and their headstones are surrounding this statue right here that really caught my attention. I don't know much about this family other than the fact that they immigrated here at one point in time from the Netherlands. I'm going to start this episode off today talking about Rebecca Jane Hearn, who also went by Reba, and she was born in Clear Lake, Iowa on August 21st, 1881. Her father David was a prominent lawyer, judge, banker, newspaper man, and mayor. In 1905, the family moved to Spokane, where her father David continued to practice law eventually becoming a judge here in Spokane. Reba attended Cornell College in Mount Vernon, Iowa, and received her undergraduate degree in 1905 at Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois. Reba taught school for two years in Spokane and Ritzville. She was convinced that teaching was the only profession open to her. She left for Germany in 1907 for her graduate studies, and in 1908 she met Nathan Strauss, co-owner of Macy's Department Store. He was in Germany to introduce his milk distribution charity to reduce child mortality by providing safe, pasteurized milk to the poor. Reba began volunteering and learned to pasteurize milk. At Strauss's invitation, she abandoned her studies to go to New York where she supervised a number of his milk distribution depots. In the fall of 1908, she oversaw the pasteurization demonstrations at the 6th International Congress on Tuberculosis held in Washington, D.C. There she mingled with internationally renowned scientists and leaders in public health earning press recognition for her work. Also in 1908, Strauss was the New York chairman for the unsuccessful presidential campaign of Democrat William Jennings Bryan. Strauss diverted Reba from some of her charity work to help with his political activities, during which she worked with Bryan and many other important figures. 
At one rally, she was the only woman on the platform with the dignitaries. Returning to Spokane in 1910, she assisted her father with his successful campaign for Superior Court Judge. Through a combination of studies at the University of Washington and private readings with her father, she became the first woman admitted to the Washington State Bar Association. In 1913, she was the only woman lawyer or elected official in the city or county of Spokane. As a member of the Prohibitionist Party, she was elected to the staunchly male Senate office in 1922. Although Washington women had been voting for 10 years, this was the first year they were able to cast their votes in a presidential election. Reba was a Republican senator during a time when a vast Republican majority dominated both houses of the government chair. She proposed stricter controls on lobbyists and fought for tax relief and other assistance for eastern Washington farmers. Because of her voting record in the Senate and personal contact with constituents back home, Reba won a second term in 1926 without campaigning. She chaired the Public Morals and State Library Committees during her two terms. The issue she was most identified with was prohibition. Throughout her legislative career, she defended Washington's dry law. In her second term, she broke precedent by being on the Judiciary and Appropriations Committees. Her final major cause, the one that defeated her attempt at a third term, was the elimination of the wasteful and inefficient township system of county government, which was important to her rural constituents in Spokane County. While in office, Reba worked tirelessly for reform in the treatment of female prisoners in the state correctional institutions. After her defeat in 1930, she returned to Spokane and her law practice. Although Reba considered for the state senate again, she never did. She was defeated in 1936 in her attempt to become a Spokane County Superior Court judge. Reba would remain active in public affairs and was well respected and often quoted in the newspaper and consulted by party officials. Reba continued to practice law in Spokane until her retirement in 1946. Then she moved to the Middle East for five years, translating the Quran into English, and she participated in the People to Power delegations during the Eisenhower years. Her travels took her around the world. Reba was honored by the American Bar Association for over a half a century of service. She passed away in California on November 13, 1967.
Seth Thomas Woodard was born in Manhattan, Kansas on October 18, 1872. When he was just 10 years old, he traveled to the Spokane Valley area on a wagon with his four siblings and his parents, Joseph and Sarah. They would purchase 170 acres of land in the area. By the time Seth was a man of 27 years, he was one of the largest farmers in Spokane Valley. Raising cattle and wheat on 320 acres, he would marry a woman named Celia and they would have 12 children together. In fact, several streets in Spokane are named after some of his children, like Francis, for example. He donated land for a paper mill and a school to be built, among other things, in Spokane. And he was an active member of the Salvation Army for 50 years. He was also a founding member of the Spokane Pioneer Society. He was also a member of the Spokane Historical Society, the Son and Daughters of Pioneers, the Spokane Valley Chamber of Commerce, the Grange, and the Masonic Lodge. He also helped form the Millwood Irrigation System and served as its superintendent until he retired in 1955. Later in life, after both of their spouses died, Seth and Sonora Smart Dodd became companions and formed the International Father's Day Association and drove the effort to have the day recognized as a national holiday. Seth would pass away on June 9, 1960.